The railway from Stranraer to Glasgow is just over 100 miles long, the last 40 of which are electrified. As we leave Stranraer, the locally named polytunnel to the right occupies the site of the former bay platform. The instrument to the right houses the train staffs to Stranraer. Following completion of the railway to Port Patrick, the line from Dumfries was operated by the Caledonian Railway from 1860. This is one of the really unspoilt areas of the country and has its own amazing beauty. It's home to numerous birds of prey that can occasionally be seen swooping down on some unsuspecting creature. This remote moorland is the third area of Wigtonshire, after the Rins and the Mackers, known collectively as the Moors. Air Station once boasted six platforms, and the southern platforms four and six were to the south of the station before the bridge. The remains of platform six can be seen to the right. This is the third station in air, opened in. This really is golf country, flanked by the Gales Golf Links. Compared to the rest of the route to Srenraar, this 11-mile section of dead-level track from Newton to Irvin, adjacent to the coastline of the Firth of Clyde, was cheap and easy to construct. Scheme bypasses Glasgow Central and joins the Queen Street low-level line at Belgrove. Signalling is now controlled from the Bridge Street workstation. Effectively, all the lines in the centre bottom screen interfacing with the workstations of Shields, Cathcart and Paul Madi. we pass beneath the busy M74 motorway from Carlisle. Curving to the north, we can see the former Glasgow Central Power Signal Box. Located in the V of Bridge Street Junction, it opened in January 1961 and closed at the end of December 2008. In 1840, trains from Ayr terminated here, south of the River Clyde at Bridge Street. The line was extended across the river into a brand new terminus at Glasgow Central, opened on 31st July. 